places across the United States, we start to see some very bad maps in a lot of states. Illinois, for, Illinois map, for instance, only gives the Republicans three districts out of its 17. Texas's map ensures that no Republican in the nearby future will lose re-election. And today we're going to be focused on the North Carolina map, which is quite gerrymandered and only gives the Democrats three districts and the Republicans get ten, with one competitive district currently held by Democrats. In the own map, the Democrats held eight, five districts, while the Republicans held eight, with a few competitive districts that both parties can flip, the first, the eighth, and the ninth. However, in this new map, Greensboro gets cracked several times, as well as Winston-Salem, and just being not a very good map. Democrats lose one district, being Katie Manning's district. She has been drawn out to a R plus 16 district. J.K. Butterfield, the Democrat, has gone from a D plus 7 district to a D plus 1 district, and a additional seat is added for North Carolina, which also gives the Republicans one more district, which is honestly pretty gerrymandered. And honestly, this is not a great map, but I'm going to be making a fair map, which is this, for the state of North Carolina. Democrats earn six congressional districts, while the Republicans earn eight districts. Now, it is a little bit difficult to make a 77 map with a lot of competitive districts. I tried to make four competitive districts in this instance for the Democrats and the Republicans. Two in favor of the Democrats, two in favor of the Republicans. However, it's very likely that the Democrats will be able to pick up the third seat, third district in the nearby future as this district does have the Charlotte suburbs, which are voting towards the left. So let's start with the first district. We're going to be analyzing every single district, and the first is our first district, of course. The, uh, the population center is in Buncombe County, where Asheville is. The city of Asheville is pretty blue overall. Um, it's barely under 100,000 people, and it's 77.5% blue, so yeah. This area voted for Joe Biden, but it is diluted because of these rural areas, and you can't really do much to this, because even if you make a fair map, these areas are going to get diluted regardless. This district is about a R plus 10 district using President 2020 data. The second district is this district that is trending blue overall, but is not going to flip anytime soon. This district is a R plus 24 district. It takes in the main population centers are Gaston and um, Cabo. There's also some of the other counties. These are, This district takes in mostly very populated counties overall. Now, if we look at the third district, this is a district that's bolting leftward. I want you guys to look at these North Carolina suburbs around Charlotte. If you look at 2016 presidential data, you can see that a lot of these areas were red. Now, take away these few precincts, you'll see that it has bolted de Democratic quite literally. And we changed it to Senator 2016, each it, it's basically red. And in this map, it will be considered a likely red district. However, due to the recent trends, it has made it so that the Democrats will probably win it in 2024 or so, not necessarily in 2022. Going to the 4th District though, Charlotte again with some of these suburbs, it's going to remain for two Democrats and not going to Republicans anytime soon. The 5th District, this is a district that Republicans lead by 2 to 1 in this district, so pretty red. There's not much Democratic areas in this district at all. Now, if we look at the 6th district here, it's very rural. I try to not take in Winston-Salem because it will be a little bit gerrymandered if we took in Winston-Salem. It will be a dilution of the Democratic voters. If we look at the 6th district here, this district is pretty red. It's 2-1 to one red as well. It's over 2-1 to one red. The 7th district, however, is, I think, 2-1 to one blue. Yeah, it's actually close to 3-1 to one blue. 
My grabs in Winston Salem and Greensboro and High Point, so a very blue district overall. Mainly the Democratic areas. The eighth district is this district that is super competitive and could flip to either political party. The Democrats hold the edge here, and I don't expect them to lose the edge. Um, the Democrats win in this district mainly because of Orange County that nets the Democrats about forty thousand votes. Chatham County nets the Democrats about five thousand votes. The other counties do end up favoring the Republicans, but it's just basically not enough to make sh the Republicans win the district. It's very narrow. This district is super narrow for the Democrats. I believe using part of the 2020 data. Yeah, it's only D plus two district. It's eight thousand votes that decides the district, but it's still a Democratic district. The ninth district is a as close to a majority black district, but um, it's a, it may not be VIA compliant because I'm pretty sure this district is not majority black. If we look at the district details, it is. Oh, I selected wrong district. The ninth district. It's 41% black, so so it's not majority black, but it's quite difficult to make a majority black district, and with a compact map, that's what you get. Now, if you look at the 10th district, this is a district that it, it's treading red because of the rollback areas down here. This is actually the opposite of the 3rd district right next to it. If we look at part of 2016, it's a much more democratic map. And Hillary Clinton would have barely lost the district, however, Biden would have made the districts about three points better. Again, Biden does do Sally Barrett in Fayetteville, but I just mean that not, not a lot better, and the Democrats just do a lot worse in the rural areas. If we look at the 14th district, not 14th, but the 11th district, this basically takes a dual ham. Uh, um, all of Durham, and then it takes in a precinct from the neighboring county, Gradsville, and then the, most of its population does come from the Cary area, close to Raleigh. This district, if I had to make a bet, 2 to 1 Democratic, and it's indeed 2 to 1 Democratic. The 12th district should be a little bit closer because of the personally a little bit redder areas. But it's still probably 2 to 1 Democratic, and it is close to 2 to 1 Democratic. Now, this district was cl relatively close in 2016. Um, yeah, there's a lot more red across this rally suburban area. And Terry Town 16 would, would have been worse. I mean, the Democrats only would have won the district by 16 points, which is still pretty solid, but again, not close to being as solid as President 2020. Now we go to 13th District. It has um, one of the population centers of the district is in Wayne County, another in Leon, and the largest is in um, the area surrounding Wilmington where Joe Biden was able to win, but Donald Trump was able to carry it in 2016. This district is a red district, however, it does, it is a little bit competitive, it's a deep R plus 11. It's not really trending either way, it's trending Republican a little bit, I should say. Now the 14th district, it's not going to flip. Um, and it's trending red, I believe. Um, this does look a little bit gerrymandered, but yeah. If you look at statistics here, and then go to analytics... It's pretty proportional overall. I mean, this is a good, relatively good shape. Proportionality should be higher um, to make a fair map, but I say it's decent. Especially because, yeah, I did try to give the Republicans a little bit more of an advantage. So, yeah. If we look at Town 20, this is what we have, again, very similar map. It's with Kyle Cunningham. Cunningham did worse in the 3rd District, as you expect. He did better in the 10th District. 
Actually, did better in the first district, but yeah, Cunningham did underrun Joe Biden by by, by a point five percent. Governor Town twenty. A lot of the districts do fall down for the GOP. The th third actually, so third team actually gets surprisingly competitive as well. As the first, but again, Roy Cooper is his performance is like the best reasonably for the Democrats. Um, you can see some of the precinct maps around these areas pretty good for Democrats. Um, Lieutenant Governor, I think the Democrats very narrowly won that race. Yeah, the Democrats won the nation race by 0.24%, somewhat ex um, similar to what a tied race would look like. The Lieutenant Governor, wait a minute, wait, what? So, the, oh, so that was the Attorney General, the Lieutenant Governor. The Democrats didn't win that race. Again, similar to Prior 2020, but worse for Democrats. Prior 2016, that's what you more likely expect. So in 2016, again, even the 8th District does fall down. The 7th actually gets surprisingly competitive. If we look at President 2020 for Democrats, it was a blowout for in the 7th District. Look at the results, it's like D plus 26. Well, if we look at um, certain towns 16, yeah, if we go to this map, um, it's D plus 18. So, again, a very bad performance for the Democrat here. Winston Salem was barely blue. I mean, Greensboro wasn't blue by that much either. So, yeah, the Democrat still was able to carry. Um, orange very comfortably, but the eighth still goes red, and then the third isn't even that competitive. I mean, just look at the suburbs. It's not very good for Democrats. Now if we look at Harvard 2016, this was Roy Cooper's first election. He won by a very narrow 0.2% statewide. So that's what you maybe expect in a pretty good year for Democrats. This was... Um, a pretty good performance for the Democrats as well. The Democrats in 2016 Attorney General won by 0.5%. The Democrats were able to win this district, but again, they don't, didn't perform that well in the third district. The Democrats did do decently in the first district, and up here they were able to win the eighth district, which is turning blue a little bit, in my opinion. Lieutenant Governor. That wasn't a best race for Democrats, though they did win the 10th district, which I guess made sense at the time. It was a R plus 6 victory in Lieutenant Governor 2016 for the Republicans, but again, Democrats just underperformed significantly in the 7th district in these traditionally blue districts, but were able to overperform in the majority black, not majority black, but very black district over here. If we look at black population and they go down here, you can see in the Fayetteville area, very black. Um, yeah, we could go to Senator Townsend 14. That was a relatively good performance for Democrats, though they did come up short by a point there. You can see at the time it was the United States was less polarized in Greensboro in Raleigh. In the rally suburbs, I mean, at the time the nation was less polarized, it was D plus 14. Like, rally was only D plus 14, and, and then Charlotte was only D plus 22. But right now, these areas are like D plus 30 areas, while areas like in the rural first district, for example, in random county here, maybe this county, it was. 37% for the Democrats. Right now, we got 20 something for the Democrats. Prior to 2012, 2016, not the best for the Democrats, but Obama did have good appeal in the 10th district, so that did help the Democrats a little bit. Prior to 2016, 2020, again, what you expect. The Democrats doing decently in the 3rd and 10th, while winning the 8th and the 9th. While the Republicans also making the 8th very, very competitive and within reach for the 9th district. The 9th district will be close to D plus 10, although using the P, um, um, PVI it will be D plus 2.8. 
again in 2016. I think this would be, yeah, because this is a composite data, I'm not so sure about the votes, but I think that it's still a pretty dumb hack election. Pretty okay numbers for Democrats and pretty okay number for the Republicans, but the Democrats do lose by over two percentage points. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, this is my favorite North Carolina map. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you actually did enjoy the video, be sure to like and subscribe um, on the screen right now. This channel supports to have fair maps for all 50 states. So be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. And I'll see you guys all maybe in the next video.